Uh, hi, um, how are you? Fine, fine, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Um, if you could just start by introducing yourself, uh, your speciality, name of your gallery, etc. Okay, I'm the owner-director of Hangaten Gallery, and Hangaten specializes in contemporary Japanese prints and paintings. Uh, Hanga in Japanese means prints, and ten means shop. So we are the shop of prints. We've been established in London for nearly 25 years and have been instrumental in bringing the major Japanese contemporary print artists to the Western market in the UK and to Europe. I can see you've got a beautiful print behind you. If you could um, introduce this artist to us, please. Yes. So this uh, print I thought would be extremely appropriate for the current situation we're facing with the pandemic because the print's name is called Turbulence and it is by an artist named Daniel Kelly. Now Daniel originated from America but he has actually been living in Kyoto, Japan for over 40 years and when he first came to Kyoto he studied under a print master named Tokuriki Tomikichiro, who is a 13th generation artist, and uh, his teacher actually studied under Hiroshige. Oh, wow. So there is a very sort of a, a uh, important connection for Japanese printmaking history for Daniel Kelly. And in the beginning, Kelly chose to make prints that were reminiscent of classical Japanese woodblock prints. And you will see one here on the screen called Persimmon Sunrise. And this, this one is from early 1980s, uh, actually 1983. So this was what he was doing originally in his early days. But in the late 1980s to 1990s, Kelly really wanted to add more texture to his prints and this he discovered one can only do if one uses thicker paper than the Japanese washi paper that uh, most artists are using for woodblock printmaking in Japan. So he started using Nepalese paper and this one in the back actually does use Nepalese paper. It's very thick paper. It's very difficult therefore to print on and so for each print Kelly actually has to print each one of the sheets of the edition 40 or 50 times. Wow. So if you're looking at this uh, print, which is an edition of 40, it means that he has to print this approximately 160 to 200 times wow. before the whole edition uh, is completed. And this is actually to get the gradation of the light. You see up there the gradation going from dark blue to light blue. But that, that's why he needs to do the multiple printing. And you will see on the screen now the actual woodblock print that he used to make this work. And I took this photograph when I visited him in July of last year. He was actually just beginning to, to make the print. And, and so it took him many months to complete. He completed this in January of this year. So also he adds a brush technique to, to each one of his prints to, to get the coloring. Mm. And you will see a close up of this print. You'll see the sort of the rough texture of the water tumbling and the rocks and, and the paper that he uses. So that is quite a uh, unique feature mm. of Daniel Kelly. Yeah, I mean, there's really so much texture in the prints. Like you can see the emphasis of the handmade and hand finished quality on it, which I think is really nice. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, so that's the first uh, work that I wanted to talk about. Um, the second work is to show that uh, despite the fact that in printmaking in Japan, woodblock seems to be what comes to one's mind uh, initially. It's really that contemporary Japanese artists uh, are working in all sorts of printmaking mediums. And I want to talk therefore a little bit about the uh, living legend Toko Shinoda, who works uh, as a painter but also in uh, lithographs with hand coloring. So she does lithographs using a stone rather than a metal plate. And on that, because she's a calligrapher, 
and an abstract expressionist image person. She, she actually takes the Sumi ink and, and directly draws the image that she wants mm. on, onto the stone. Now, uh, of course, she's old now, <laughs> so she doesn't do lithographs anymore. She finished her last lithograph in 2007. But the lithograph that you are seeing on the screen now is called Etude. And I chose this because it has two words on the uh, image. The word on with the red sumi ink is actually the word for play, the character for play in Japanese. And the black sort of the lines on, on the right hand side is the word for travel. So I chose these because it is things that we can't do at the moment because we are locked down, but because I thought there would be hope for the future that we can play more and we can travel more. Definitely. And uh, the important concept about Shinoda is she works very much with um, the Zen concept of Ma, leaving space within a picture. So all the white space, if you if you see a close up of, of, of this lithograph, is is um, left intentionally and and becomes part of the image itself, part of the entire picture. Mm. So she's very philosophical. She is a poet as well. So I think her mentality starts out actually with envisioning sort of a poem in her mm -hmm. head before she actually takes the brush to the stone or to to a piece of paper. Mm. Yeah, I've seen um, people describe them as Zen paintings as well. Well, I, th I think um, in terms of paintings, it, it's really the Zen um, philosophy of simplicity rather than um, have human beings because the Zen concept and uh, philosophy and religion doesn't have idols or, or human beings in their pictures. It's, it's all to do with nature. Mm. So everything that is Zen oriented uh, will come from nature. You, will, you can almost sort of envision hearing the sound of nature in a painting. Mm. Do you want to... Do you want to see a close-up of this? Oh, yeah, you have. Yeah, well, I didn't realise it was so large. Yeah, it's 41 by 72. Wow. It's quite large. Mm. I just, the contrast of the, the red in all of her works is fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. So the red red is quite... It's mm. very good. Uh, it's done by Cinnabar ink. Cinnabar it's, ink. It's her signature colour. It doesn't okay. look that big against the Kelly, but the Kelly is 50, 51 by 76 mm. and very small for a Kelly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've seen his um, persimmons, which is huge, I but think. The largest he made, he's famous for making the biggest woodblock print in Japan. Oh, I'm definitely going to research his to print. Yeah, yeah. I've never yeah. seen that before. Okay. Cool. All right, thank you so much, Chico. Thanks, Kurt. Bye, bye. Bye. bye.